You need a theory of change. It gets people sense. involved in politics. Has anyone and had any problems with how are you going to bring in? When Malcolm Gladwell wrote that piece uh, about how today's networked activists are trivial and ineffective by comparison with the courageous sit in organisers of the civil rights movement, uh, I mean, some of us took this quite personally. Uh, not, not because I thought he was right, because I knew he was wrong, but it was my Malcolm Gladwell. I would have sent him an email uh, if he'd had an email list. But <sighs> And then, you know, history has a way of um, uh, bringing karma back around. So within a few short months, we heard about these interesting events in the Middle East. And, and the word schadenfreude does not describe how I felt. Um, mostly about Hosni Mubarak, actually, but uh, a little bit about Malcolm Gladwell as well. It's interesting. Even Evgeny Morisov has recently become a little bit more of a cyber optimist, I see. And it's partly about what's going on with WikiLeaks, but it's also partly about what's been going on in the Middle East. I think what's just happened in Egypt and what's really going on in societies around the world right now is much richer and more interesting, as many people have said, than, than some of... Uh, the facile debates which happen in the media. Um, it has seismic implications for the organising models of NGOs, of political parties, even of corporations and governments. Uh, but it also heralds danger as well as promise uh, for the future uh, of our world. Let's look at what happened in Egypt. Um, Eric is absolutely right um, that that had been brewing for a long time uh, and that real activists use any tools that come to hand. Uh, and you know, the, the work of, uh, of Islamic activists, as well as trade unions, um, uh, and, and of digital activists, was really important in what happened there. Um, I mean, one of the things that happened was that over a period of several years, people were experimenting with Facebook and building a sense of collective efficacy and breaking a fear barrier on Facebook. And they were campaigning against on economic struggles and campaigning against police brutality uh, and building up circles of trust in that environment. Usually, I think Facebook is a hopeless environment for organising, but in a, in a totalitarian society which has opened up that particular tool, it becomes useful because people will point, pay attention to a Facebook message. And this really emphasises the importance of understanding context. Um, uh, but the role that the social technology of Facebook played um, alongside uh, unions, alongside all sorts of social forcing factors in Egypt, um, uh, it just took it the extra stage. And then people got into Tahrir Square, which is, was a social technology of its own. It's a temporary autonomous zone. Um, but we're finding that that spontaneous, apparently spontaneous organisation uh, was not enough. It was not enough to deliver lasting change, and it will not be enough to deliver lasting change. So you go back to the real forms of organisation and institutions in civil society which need to deliver on change. So, you know, the internet can help, but it's not the answer uh, all on its own. Um, I think there's a real danger that a rising global generation of activists learn the wrong lessons from what's going on at the moment. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of the self-organisation that's going on, uh, a lot of organisation below the self-organisation, if you know what I mean, but um, there is a real danger that some of the purists and, and um, uh, proponents of things like Twitter self-organisation uh, are isolating themselves and uh, cutting other people off from, from vital tools uh, because, uh, because we need institutions. Uh, we need institutions on the internet uh, just as we need institutions in the rest of real life. Uh, and trade unions are great institutions, and 38 Degrees for My Money is a great institution, and My Society for My Money is a great institution. Um, and the way in which we can have arguments about all of these things isn't, isn't a bad thing either. Um, Michael White, that article really annoyed me. <laughs> um, and in a way, what he says is true, and he beautifully describes the crassest, most transactional, most incompetent, and in the US, all too frequent abuse of network technologies by professionals and NGOs. And uh, it's just completely inauthentic. 
Uh, but you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The fact that it is possible to do this stuff badly does not mean that it is not possible to do it well. Um, Malcolm Gladwell, again, he described the most trivial um, media groupy versions of change through social media. Um, Iran was a classic example. I, was, I got into an argument with Evgeny Morosov, where I think I won. Um, uh, <laughs> I think he acknowledged that I were. Um, where he was talking about you know, it wasn't a Twitter revolution in Iran. There wasn't. Facebook was used to send messages to millions of people who went to the streets. People were contacting each other through these social media channels, using mobile phones, at parties. Over a period of 10 years, <laughs> this went on. And it was online and it was offline. Uh, and networks of solidarity were built. People did some very interesting stuff with circum circumvention technologies in the way. So internet activism, incredibly important in Iran, um, but just not Twitter. It's not my fault the media don't cover the real story. I, I just want to step back for a minute. I, I used to be a big fan of Adbusters, which Micah now works with, but um, it just didn't work for most people. It wasn't a mode of engagement that worked for most people. I came to network organizing basically because the existing models of organizing were failing. They were falling short. Um, when millions of people around the world marched on a single day against the Iraq war, um, you know, we, we were inspired, many of us, by what the New York Times was calling the, the rise of the second superpower. But those flash-in-the-pan marches failed. Um, and that shows that the transience of Facebook groups and Twitter is neither new nor unique to the internet. Uh, there was a boomerang of disillusionment after that moment. Uh, and we learned the lesson that we needed to find new ways to sustain and channel progressive social energy. Uh, and then we had Make Poverty History a couple of years later, which reminded us on the one hand, of the scale of popular feeling about public issues, but also that we cannot rely completely either on coalitions of established NGOs, one of which I now work for, or on well-meaning celebrity activists, and that building dynamic new movements is unlikely to happen from the top down. Uh, so it's these experiences are the failure of old-fashioned kinds of activism to, to, to do what was needed, um, of the gaps, let's say, uh, that existed that led many of us to explore building new kinds of institutions, network movements. Uh, and Avaaz, which I helped to launch in 2007 and has since grown to over 7 million members worldwide, is today the largest example of such a movement and not big enough by half. Uh, but it's true that through Avaaz, millions of global citizens have come together successfully to change government policies from Brazil to Japan, real hard evidence of changing major government policies. They've donated millions of dollars to democratic movement building, something that's bloody hard to fund except through the trade unions <laughs> these days, um, and to civilian reconstruction from Burma to the Middle East to Haiti. And perhaps most importantly, to touch on the point that Michael made, to spread a sim simple contagious idea, a meme, that most people everywhere want a better world and that by coming together, we can help to build it. You can't underestimate the extent to which a sense of impotence and disillusionment is the biggest barrier uh, to ever engaging in activism. And the emails that I got from kids in little towns all over the world saying, wow, <laughs> you've made me believe in something. Um, and they you know, went and got involved in stuff in their local areas. It's a virus. Uh, and I think one of the things I'm most proud of with ours is how that Virus spread. Sorry, it's choking me up. Um, it's a bit pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> um, anyway. So, you know, Avaaz, one of the things it's done is given support and solidarity to courageous activists in all sorts of challenging and dangerous situations. It's flash mob parliaments. Malcolm Gladwell, I don't think, knows this, but it's even helped organise sit-ins, um, notably at the Copenhagen summit, where Nonviolent activists read out the names of millions of petition signers. They were thrown out, then they encircled the negotiations and made sure that a weak outcome could not be greenwashed. Um, Avaaz members who come up to me always wanted to argue and discuss about things. One of the things they said most was, thank you for the links at the bottom of the email, <laughs> because they felt that there was a kind of a, a respect and a deliberative approach there, um, that we were 
providing a kind of evidence base and a set of pieces of information that, that they didn't necessarily encounter uh, through their ordinary media experience. So for many people, a vase is, is a form of media. Um, petitions. I know internet or Facebook petitions, which are never delivered to their targets, deserve our scorn. But petitions really are a vital tool for citizens, and they help build movements. The Chartists recognized that in 1848. Uh, they combine high level lobbying with media shaming with the legitimacy and force of participatory democracy, as 38 Degrees did recently with the Save Our Forests campaign. Testing. Micah goes on about testing uh, as being evil and markety. And testing is a profoundly democratic practice. It acts as a check and a balance on organizers who tend to be enraptured with their own rhetoric and their own policy ideas and their own theories of change, which very often don't have any resonance whatsoever for most people. Um, so, you know, testing is some, one of the techniques which leads activist leaders to be more democratic, more accountable, and it leads, frankly, to many more people getting in, engaged in these movements. So, and I think there's some very interesting things going on in the world right now. Uh, from Egypt to the streets of Britain, there are no network organisers working with the grain of how societies work today, sort of individualistic solidarity. Uh, and they're combining old and new tactics to do things which are, I think, in the long view, if we look at a decade or more, potentially as historic as the civil rights or the independence movements of the last century. Um, but there are some bigger challenges. Um, I mean, uh, first, you know, these are technologies and approaches uh, to building movements and, uh, and having an impact on on how we're governed, um, which aren't generally available at the moment. They're only available to a few people. Um, aren't that available in poorer and emerging economies. And I can tell you, Avaz's biggest membership is in Brazil, 750,000. Massive national successes. This stuff works in, <laughs> outside the Anglosphere and in the global south. Um, uh, but it's not available there right now in, in, in a, in a well-organized way. There's a difference between thinking that social media is going to save you through self-organization, um, as through some sort of magical uh, thinking, uh, and doing the hard work of building social structures using network technologies that enable us to change our societies for the better. Uh, and that's what I think we need to do. And I think we also need to get better at shaping the prevailing public conversation uh, from global media to the doorstep. And I, I think that meme activism is something which the Tea Party movement uh, have done much, much better than progressives have uh, globally. If you look at what they've done to perceptions of government. Um, so, um, I think I'm pretty much done. Uh, yeah, and we also need to change the real world. <laughs> Build better institutions for governments and, uh, and our economies, because we're facing some pretty big challenges right now. But I think this kind of... Uh, Network-based organizing is a critically important tool. You just have to do it right. Um, all right, that's enough.